Hi, it's Dave Verban Astro, and today I'm going to show you an installation of some of the basic software that I use in my astro imaging process. So here we are in my PC, my little remote PC, that's going to go on my telescope. And I debated for a long time whether or not to tie the remote PCs to a telescope or to a mount. And I decided after a, a period of introspection and reflection that it probably made more sense to tie it to a telescope. So that way it will go with that telescope and will be independent of what mount it's on which means I can install drivers for at least the two mounts that I've got, uh, which is a Skywatcher EQ6R Pro and a Las Bendy um, Celestron version of the G11, which has been updated and basically brought up to basically mirror uh, the new versions of the G11G. So anyway, so I named this guy Astrotech, as you can see here. It's the Overclock 3C version. And again, I'm not going to go into how to set up your PC so that you can get into it via remote desktop or how to set up the Wi-Fi or how to set up um, an account. All that Chad covers wonderfully well in a video that I will link down below. Chad of Patriot Pastor of Patriot Astro. And it just makes sense instead of for me going over that process all over again, just to go ahead and refer you to his video and he'll walk you through all that. So anyways, you can see that it's got the 95095 uh, Celeron processor running at 2 gigahertz. It's got 16 gig of memory. Um, my last one had 8, so this is double the size. Of course, it says 15.8 gigs uh, usable, and that's because 0.2 of it is set aside for video. That's cool. It's running Windows 11 Pro, and that's pretty much it for this PC. And when you um, look into the file manager, you'll see that there's actually, it's been configured into two separate drives. One is the local C drive, which is uh, 229 gigabyte size. And then there's just the D drive, which I renamed for images. And it's 238 gigs. In my D drive, I have another image directory. And that's where all my subs and my flats and all that will go in there for each and every night until they get moved over to my uh, workstation here in my office and there will be a directory here for Nina for all the config files for all the templates um, for all the JSON files that it creates for all the advanced sequences all that stuff will be stored there so that it can be replicated and backed up onto my desktop here in my office and then here's the software directory and this has all the software that I've downloaded now, if you want links to the downloads, uh, you can go out to my website, uh, urbanastro.photography, and there you'll find um, a web page with all the software, with all the links. You just click on the link, and it'll just directly download that particular software package. And again, please note, it's only up to date as of the date that I created the web page. So if a piece of software gets updated after that fact, it's not going to be reflected on that page. You'll have to go out to the website for that particular piece of software and get the new updated version. So my plan of attack here is first to install ASCOM and then uh, GreenSwap Server, which is the ASCOM driver. Uh, and then the Gemini Telescope, uh, Gemini 2, which is for the Lost Mandy. And then I'll do the Deep Sky Dad flat panels, which are here. And then I uh, will install the Environment Safety Monitor Setup. And then we'll go into the ZWO cameras, drivers, and then the ASCOM drivers for like 
uh, uh, the filter wheel and the electronic um, focuser. Then we'll install the Pegasus Astro Unity platform, which is used for my Falcon rotator and for my power box and for my uh, Uranus metro station, which will probably be another video. And then we'll just do a quick install of Stellarium and then we'll move into plate solving and we'll set up, uh, we'll, we'll install ASTAP along with the associated uh, star database. And then we'll install plate solve 3.8. Uh, which Nina uses as a blind plate solver, so that's what I got it there for. And then we'll go into Nina itself, and I'm running version 2.2, which is the latest release version. And along with that, I'm going to install the Sky Atlas image repository so that when you're in the Sky Atlas um, section of Nina and you do not have internet access, you can still search for objects and, and see them and see what they are. Uh, because this has all those objects downloaded, whereas you can search on them. It's basically a searchable database, visual image database, and then there's the Framing Assistant Cache, which has all these objects uh, for framing. So you can frame up your objects or that piece of the sky, if you will, in your Framing Assistant. You can rotate it, you can move the object around to get the kind of framing you want for your sensor. So all that's part of the Nina install. And then we'll install ASI Studio. This is so that I can look at FITS files without having to fire up Nina to do it. So if after an imaging session, I just want to review and see how successful my night was, uh, I can go ahead and just look at it through the ASI Studio. It has a FITS view. That's what I install that for. And then, of course, PHD2, and I'm going to run the latest release version, which is 2.6.11, and as well as the related log viewer. Now, all this software is designed to help me automate my imaging sessions, and that's why I've got the particular software in the particular order that I've got it. And all I'm going to do today is just do basic installs. I'm not doing any configuration. Some of those things that are going to require separate videos for configuration is going to be like Green Swamp Server. How do you set it up with your particular telescope? And I'll go through that. The Gemini 2 setup. How do we set that up so that it will talk to my mount? Uh, I use the uh, Ethernet connection rather than USB. So how do we set all that up with a hand controller and all that? So this has a lot of pieces and parts. Uh, there's the Gemini 2 and then there's the hand controller and a lot of things can be done through software and a lot of things are done through the hand controller and going back and forth. So we'll talk a little bit about that just to get it initially set up. So that will be a separate video. The environmental safety monitor will be another separate video, but this will probably be one of the last ones I do because this requires you to set up your weather and Nina because it uses the weather to determine whether or not it's safe to do imaging or not. And this becomes um, used as a condition. And I can have it spawn a, uh, a message to me to tell me that it's not safe for me to do imaging. Um, then I can come out and investigate what's going on. Uh, it's likely cloud cover or or the wind or something of that particular nature. It depends on what I set it up for, but we'll talk about all that in that particular video. Uh, Pegasus Astro Utility uh, Unity platform will probably be a separate video. There's not really much configuration here, but just understanding what the platform is and what it does and how you can talk to multiple different pieces of Pegasus Astro equipment that you may have, like I've got the power boxes, I've got uh, the Falcon Rotator, and I've got the um, Uranus Metro Station. And so how I can interact with all that will be the focus of that particular video. Stellarium is its own like creature, and yeah, there will be a separate uh, setup. There might be one or two setup videos because you can set up your telescope and get your telescope to work in this and point it in the right place. And you can also set up your cameras and your telescope so that you can view um, and get a sense as to what the object is going to look like. And you can use it for 
basically slowing your slowing your telescope if you don't want to go through the Nina uh, setup and and slew that way. So it's another way that you can do slewing and Nina. Um, I use it just basically to look at objects so I can figure out what telescope would be the best to use well not to use my you know my RC6 or if I can use um, uh, a wider field scope so that's what I basically use to learn for and then we'll so that will be a separate set of videos and then of course there's ASTAP setup which is just straight forward uh, plates off. Nina will be a whole series of videos because each tab has configuration and setup that you need to go through and I'll walk you through all that. Uh, chat at Patriot, Ast at Patriot Astro has some pretty good videos on how to do some basic setups and Nina um, but everybody's a little bit different and so I'll just show you what my setup is and between my setup and Chad's setup, you should be able to figure out how you want this thing to be set up. And then PhD2, of course, uh, you've got the setup wizard that you're going to have to run through. And when you change mounts, you're going to change configurations. So we'll walk through how to do a basic initial setup on PhD2, which will be another um, video or two. Okay, so now having said all that, and we're 11 minutes in, let me go ahead and launch the ASCOM platform here. And we'll go ahead and we'll install that. Now as we're installing things, some things take a while to install. And as it takes a while to install, we will, I'll just go ahead and I'll just put things um, on. I'll put things on fast um, so that way we can get it through instead of having if something takes five minutes to install there's no sense having you wait and watch a video for five minutes with nothing happening so um, I will speed it up so here we've got the diagnostic shortcut and the profile explorer on the desktop and I'm going to hit install and it's going to go ahead and start to install okay I don't think it's install let's take a look that actually launches okay uh, yeah we don't have anything on here so all right and let's look at diagnostics yes I just like to run the diagnostics to make sure that everything looks good and that everything is installed that we need. Okay, so everything passed, so we're good. So SCOM is installed. So now let's go to our next piece of software which is uh, Green Swamp Server oftentimes it will get unsigned um, software you just have to vouch for it license we're going to create a desktop shortcut and we're going to install it Okay, we don't need to view the manual, but there we are. And we'll just go ahead and launch it and make sure that it launches. We'll deal with configuration in another video. I just want to see if it launches. And it launches. We're in simulator mode. So that's good. So I can sit here and go connect. And we're connected in simulator. So that's good. So we can disconnect. And turn it off so it launches so that's good so let's go to Gemini and again Windows wants to protect you from running unsigned software I'm going to say run it anyways and we'll install a Gemini desktop 
this is for my lost mandy you may or may not have a lost mandy and that's perfectly fine let's just make sure it launches and there it is it launches i'm not going to connect there's no telescope to connect it to so that's good okay so now deep sky dad and again it's unsigned so you're going to get this and you're going to say run anyways and this is the device driver for it uh, we don't need to view the readme finish and then here's the control panel run anyways So there it is, it just downloaded it. So now let's go ahead and run it. And I'm gonna hit install. This is runtime five. Okay, so I installed the desktop runtime, so that's good. More info, run anyways. There it is. There's our control panel. We got nothing to connect to because I don't have any hardware hooked up yet. We're just installing, so that's good. Let me see. Um, yeah, if I remember right, this doesn't really install anything. So let me go ahead and copy, copy this to my C uh, program files. Let me create a new directory, new folder. Yes, it's going to be deep. Shortcut. Uh, da, 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 da. Show more options. Uh, where's create a shortcut? Da, 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 da. There we are. Create a shortcut. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. And we'll just name this. Get rid of the panel shortcut. Okay, this is so that it, if you have to, you can go in and you can control um, your panel. But I control it all through Nina, but sometimes if Nina isn't working right and I need to troubleshoot, I can go ahead and I can use this. So that's all set up. So you, hopefully you saw what I did there. I just basically just created a directory called Deep Sky Dad copied this file over there and then created a shortcut for it and then what's next on our list so we've got deep sky data installed so it's the environmental safety monitor set up we're going to run this we'll go through a lot of this where it'll be um, unsigned things unsigned software and that's okay accept the agreement uh, install and this is really just an ASCOM driver so we'll just say finish and then we'll go into ZWO cameras and it pretty much is this straightforward you just go through and just click everything and let everything run install don't need to visit the website finish okay so that's the that's the underlying Windows drivers, the native drivers. Now it comes the ASCOM drivers. Um, so we're, I don't care about the ASCOM mount. I do have the EAF, 
I do have the filter wheel and I do have the cameras. I don't use uh, ST4, so don't need that. Don't use USB ST4, don't need that. And I don't have the mounts. I don't have the AM5 or the AM3, so I don't need to install that. I'm just interested in these top three. And I'm going to install those. So there we go. It did ASI mount anyways. Okay, finish. And I'm just going to put that into my recycle bin. There we go. Now we go to Pegasus. Uh, yep, agree to license terms, install. There we go. And I'll do a separate video for this one because I have to attach all of my different Pegasus Astro pieces and then uh, have it recognize them and there's a process there. So that will require a separate video. And then we move into Stellarium and Stellarium will require a separate video. Might actually require two separate videos. Depends on whether or not I do one long extended one um, showing how to set up and configure uh, for all users, how to set up and configure your telescopes and your cameras as well as getting your amount to work with it and then downloading all the different databases of which I think there's like nine databases that you have to go through and download each one um, it's kind of like a progression it's kind of painful to do but and then if you want to tie it into Nina there's a Nina configuration that you have to do so that way you can tie Stellarium with Nina and I'll go through all that stuff when we do that. So there we go. We're not going to launch it right now, um, but it's there if I need it. Uh, which uh, This is Mesa Mode, Stellarium User Guide. I'm going to delete that. Don't need that don't need that either I've got the Stellarium basic that's what I want okay now we do as tap run yes we don't need to launch we're good there so there's as tap now let's install the database. This is the database that this version recommends using. There were other versions like the H database. Um, the H database has been replaced by the D database. And there's smaller pieces of this. Um, but the D50 has the entire sky survey in it. So that's what I just makes it easier. And it's called D50 because it has star density up to 5,000 stars per square degree. So that's a lot of stars to try to map. Finish. All right. Now we do plate solve three. Uh, Hmm. Okay. Okay, so let me go. Um, bum, 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 open. All right. This one, I think there's not an install as much as there is um, a copy over. And I'm going to create. So 
isolate solve 3.8. Boom. Copy that over. Continue. 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 Do this for all current items. Then according to this, um, we have to run plate solve and then go to the file menu and click on configure directory and it tells us which directories to go for. Okay. So let's open up plate solve 3.8. Yes, run this app. Okay, so here's 3.8. Um, so we're going to browse and we're going to go into this PC, we're going to go into C, we're going to go into program files, and we're going to go into plate solve 3.8, and we're going to go into Kepler. There we go. And then we run it again. Hmm, didn't find it. Doesn't like that. All right. Didn't like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm thinking it doesn't like that. Continue. Okay. This PC. Program files. Plate saw coupler doesn't like that. doesn't like that. I'm going to have to try to troubleshoot this. Okay. It's installed, but it's not working. Um, Using my old, uh, when I 
used to do this stuff. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So let me go ahead and browse. Uh, um, 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 Kepler. So I found that, so we're good. Okay, so that's the key is you gotta delete the old config file so that you can replace it with a new one. I found it, okay. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and refresh. R refresh. Okay, exit, hmm. Got those. Go ahead and create a blank text file. Okay. Now let's see if it will overwrite. Okay. Okay, it seems to have overwritten it. I think we're good. configure directory okay okay yep we're good all right that might have been worth a video on its own right there getting that thing working okay all right so after having done that guy now we can go on to Nina Nina's pretty straightforward again we're not going to do any real configuration we're just going to install it
launch it <laughs> and then here's where it gets to be fun we do have to launch it because I gotta go in uh, allow access okay so if we go into the options here and you've got the Sky Atlas image folder and you've got the Sky Survey cache folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Nina directory here and we're going to, yeah, that's what I thought. It's just a compressed folder. So we're just going to copy this, copy go here and we're going to paste and it's just going to copy that over and we'll just hit refresh there it is and then we're going to go here to framing assistant cache and we're just going to copy that and bring that over and there we are. And now what we can do is we can now go into, again, this is, we opened up Nina, we're in 2.2. We go down here to options and over here in the general section, we can point now to those specific directories. So the first directory we're gonna to point to is the Sky Atlas image repository. And we see it there. And then this next one is going to be not in C, close it, but it's going to be in D, and go into Nina, and we've got the framing assistant cache, and we say OK, and there we are. <coughs> so we got these two set up in Nina, so that's good. We can close out of Nina now, and we just wait for these two to copy over and so while they're copying over because they're just doing a copy action we're not actually installing anything we can go ahead and install the ASI studio so here we are we're just going to say yes and again the whole point of ASI studio is just so that way I can look at um, fits files without having to go through Nina uh, so yeah we're just going to go ahead and install them don't need to run it finish and now we go into PHD2 We don't need to launch it, we're good. And then the log viewer, which again is just for us to view uh, to view PHD2 logs. Uh, bum, 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 bum. We'll create a desktop, install. So, that's installing everything and as you saw I had to tweak a little bit um, the plate solve uh, 3.8 in order to get it to work um, but we were able to get it to work and hopefully you can follow those steps basically what I had to do was copy everything over into its own directory um, I had issues with overwriting the config file I think that had I just gone in and just changed the permission settings, it probably would have worked just fine. We were able to get it to work. So everything is good to go and ready now for more fine detailed configurations. So if you have any questions or any comments, please put them down below. And until next time, 
clear skies and happy guiding.